Hello and welcome back to Planet 40k, how you all doing? Today I thought we'd dip into another of the Space Marine units, this time from the fast attack options, the Invader ATV Squad. So these came out around the middle of the year, just about after the Indominus box set was released. Pretty cool looking models, they're Primaris bikers and can slot into any of your marine chapters. They'll set you back 80 points per model or 4 power if you're playing power. You can get a unit of up to 3 of them and you can also take them as individuals as well. So a quick look at their stat line then. So movement 14 inch, weapon skill 3 plus, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 4, toughness 5, wounds 8, attacks 4, leadership 7 and a 3 plus save. Toughness 5 as you'd expect on a bike unit and 8 wounds a model is really good too. These guys have got the angels of death ability which is 4 abilities in 1 and they'll show no fear which is they won't be suffering any modifiers to their combat attrition tests. Now you won't really be failing any morale tests so I wouldn't worry too much about that one. Volta Discipline does apply to bike units but the ATV squad doesn't actually carry any rapid fire weapons so we're going to skip over that one. Shock Assault is getting an additional attack if you charged, were charged or heroically intervened. Now you've got 4 attack space which is quite good but this unit isn't really made for combat. Then finally you've got Combat Doctrines which gives you certain weapon types a minus 1 AP modifier each battle round. So in turns 1, 2 and 3 are more geared towards shooter units such as your ATV squad whereas later rounds are geared more towards combat orientated units so you want to be making the most out of these guys quite early. So the other abilities that these guys carry are Turbo Boost which is each time the model advances. Don't make an advance roll instead you just get a 6 inch advance which you add to your move characteristic. They've also got the Ravenwing ability, which only affects Dark Angel players here. It gives them the Ravenwing keyword. Then finally, it can explode like a vehicle, so once destroyed on a roll of a six, everybody within three inches takes a mortal wound. So ATV bikers come stock with the frag and crack grenades and a bolt pistol. That's the three basic ones there, nothing really to write home about. Then they come with the Onslaught Gatling Cannon and a Twin Auto Bolt Rifle. So let's go over each of those for a minute. So the Onslaught Gatling Cannon is a 24 inch range weapon. It's heavy 8, strength 5, minus 1 AP and 1 damage. So the heavy actually isn't going to be costing you a minus 1 to your hit roll as you're not an infantry unit. So you do retain your ballistic skill of 3 plus and 8 shots per model with a 3 bike unit will be 24 shots. So you're going to hit on average 16 times if you're firing those. You're wounding toughness 3 and 4 on 3 so you should achieve about 10 or 11 wounds there. Against toughness 5 you need in 4s so approximately 8 on those units. Then toughness 6 right up to toughness 9 you're going to require 5s so about 5 or 6 there. The minus one is a nice little extra to take away an effective save. So this weapon is best served when targeting standard infantry that are toughness four or less, especially those of a six plus save as you remove their armor completely there. Only slight issue is the single damage. So this is why it's better for one wound models really. Now if you don't want to take the Gatling Cannon then you can replace it for a multi melter at the cost of just five points. So the multi melter is 24 inch range, heavy two, strip eight, minus four AP and D6 damage. And if you're firing within half range, that's 12 inch, then the damage characteristic will be D6 plus two damage. So it's the same range as the Gatling Cannon but definitely not the same type of weapon. It's only two shots here and again the heavy has no effect on your ballistic skill. Strength 8 as I always say is a great strength as it wounds virtually anything. The minus 4 AP modifier is tearing through any regular armour then D6 a pop is quite punishing. And as we said if it's fired within 12 inches then it's D6 plus 2 damage which is the new melter all this edition. So it's a really valuable weapon here. So doing the maths again with a full 3 man bike unit you'll be given 6 shots and at Ballistic Skill 3 you're going to be averaging 4 hits there. Now with your 4 hits you're going to be wounding Toughness 4 or less on 2s. So you should be wounding at least 3 times there, maybe even 4. Against Toughness 5 right up to Toughness 7 you'll need 3s. So approximately getting about 2 or 3 wounds in there. So that's wounding most heavy infantry and the majority of vehicles. The heavier Toughness 8 vehicles will require 4s to wound. So about 2 wounds will be getting through on average there. So of course it does the best amount of damage to infantry models that are Toughness 4 or less. But unless they're elite units, it's quite a wasteful thing for multi melters at infantry. So you're better off aiming at toughness 5 to toughness 7 models, which are your elite infantry units and vehicles. Purely as once you do wound, the AP and damage is pretty devastating. Now it's a D6 roll, and of course the damage is a little bit unreliable, but you can save that command reroll here if needed. 
or ensure you're within 12 inches to add that to damage. I personally think getting the Gatling gun is a better option here because multi-melters are sort of covered in quite a lot of other areas of the codex. So I'd rather have these faster models clearing objectives and screens quite swiftly than let the bigger things finish off the main targets. So moving away from the main weapon of the ATV, so the drivers also fire their twin auto bolt rifle. It's a 24 inch range weapon, assault 6, strength 4, no AP and 1 damage. So it's pretty standard in terms of strength and AP and the damage as well. But 6 shots is really handy for that decker. So before we move into the synergy within the codex guys, if you all could do me a huge favour and hit that subscribe button below. There's still about 60% of you are still not subscribed yet and we're aiming for 2,500 subs by Christmas. So a big thanks to all of you that are doing that now and of course a big thanks to those current supporters. So back to the video. So when you start to synergize this unit with the rest of the Space Marine Codex, you first need to be looking at the chapters that work best. So the Dark Angels have that Grim Resolve, which gives them a plus one to hit if they remain stationary. So as long as you're within 24 inch range and didn't move, you can be hitting on twos. Similarly, the Crimson Fists have their no matter the odds chapter tactic, so that gives them a plus one to their hit rolls when targeting a unit that has five or more models. So if you're using that Gatling cannon, then you most likely will be because it's more of an anti-infantry weapon. The Ultramarines chapter tactic, Codex Discipline, allows you to fall back and still shoot, although it'll be a minus one to hit. Salamanders lets you re-roll a single wound roll dice, so quite handy for your multi-melter in particular. So there's a few little buffs from chapters there. So now when all the chapters get their own individual new supplements for the 9th edition, I'm sure all of this will get improved even greater. But at the moment there's only the Space Wolves, the Death Watch and the Blood Angels codexes that are out at the moment. And two of those are more combat orientated, which is the Blood Angels and the Space Wolves. Now the Death Watch does aid them when fighting against Xenos races. and also has a unique combat doctrines rule which is called Mission Tactics which is the exact same thing but it's less restrictive on what ones you're going to use per which battle round. So if you really want to be adding a minus one AP modifier in a certain battle round for your say heavy weapons you can choose that battle round rather than the one that you've got to be stuck with. So if you wanted to use successor chapter tactics as your faction then there's a couple that benefit your ATVs nicely. So long range marksman adds a three inch to your range weapon so your heavy weapons are going to be going up to a 27 inch range. Master Artisans lets you reroll a single hit roll, which will be quite handy for your multi melters. Stalwart, which makes wound rolls of a 1 or a 2 fail against your unit. If you're being targeted by a strength 10 weapon or more, then they're not going to be catching you out so easily. They're going to need 3 still. Stealthy gives you the benefit of light cover if your ATVs are the target of a ranged attack that is more than 18 inches away. That's a few that I'd pick out from the successor chapter tactics. So looking at some stratagems within the main Space Marine Codex, there's Combat Revival for 1 CP. This does require an apothecary, then any unit with the biker keyword that is within 3 inches of your apothecary can gain a dead model back with full wounds remaining, so that's quite insane because ATVs are 80 points a pop and this can be done in each of your movement phases. It feels a bit Necron like so your opponent needs to be clearing the entire unit off to prevent this from happening over and over. Skilled Riders for 1 CP subtracts 1 from enemy hit rolls when your bikes are targeted, so nice. Transhuman Physiology for 1 CP turns all wound rolls of a 1, 2 or 3 that attack your bikes into failed rolls. Again, it feels Necron-like with the quantum shielding that they have. So it's pretty handy against high strength weapons as those are the ones that usually have the high damage. So the final stratagem that I'd sort of mention in this video is called Hit and Run Warfare. So it's also 1 CP. So you select a biker unit and they can fall back and shoot as normal. So as previously mentioned, these guys don't want to be in combat. They do have a nice amount of attacks, but compared to their shooting capabilities, you're better off not locked in combat with anything. So looking at some synergy with other units within the Codex, if you've got a Psyker on the battlefield, then cast in Psychic Fortress, which is a warp charge value of 6, will stick a 5 plus in one save on the unit. So that's quite huge for a unit with so many wounds. Also the Apothecary, it's quite OP right now if I'm honest. I mean, you can use the Combat Restoratives to regain D3 loss wounds per turn and also grants the Narthesium Aura, which is a 6 plus feel no pain if you're within 3 inches of him. In fact, if he's a Chief Apothecary, you can use that Command Restoratives twice that phase. So looking at the unit overall, very quick as you'd expect from a bite unit. Plenty of wounds, especially if you've got a max unit of 3, giving you 24 wounds, and all with a toughness of 5 too. That's a lot to chew through. A max unit will cost you 240 points, but that's quite a lot of durability there, especially if you're carrying melters, as they usually get picked off first, because they're a big threat, but 
they've got to chew through eight wounds apiece. Looking points for points, the model is 10 points per wound, which is really good value for Space Marines. And because of that amount of wounds that they've got, they feel quite tanky like a vehicle would, except they've got the disadvantage of not being able to fire into combat as they aren't technically vehicles, of course. Both the Gatling Cannon and the Multi Melter are pretty good options. They just do different jobs. So if you're lacking in heavy firepower, then your ATV can take that responsibility up with the Multi Melter. If you've got that covered but want more anti-infantry, then the Gatling Cannon's there for you too. So quite versatile as a unit. Looking at comparison within the Codex, you can look towards the Attack Bike, which are 45 points, and their Multi Melter actually costs 10 points, so bringing it up to 55 points for the Attack Bike, versus the ATV with the Multi Melter, which is actually 85. But the ATV has twice as many wounds, and also twice as many attacks. And you've also got the Twin Auto Bolt Rifle, which has more shots than what the Attack Bike does have as well. So to put it simply, points for points, the ATV is better value than the Attack Bike, although the Attack Bike pretty much has half of everything the ATV does, but not at half the cost. Because buying two Attack Bikes with the multi metals actually will cost you 110 points, as opposed to that 85 point ATV. So now there is a few advantages with the attack bike. Firstly, they've got the core keyword, which can be huge for synergizing with HQs, especially those HQs that are on bikes. Another is that you can include an attack bike within a normal bike squad within the same detachment slot. This only really applies, of course, if you're taking bikes. So to summarize, these units are really built depending on your opponent's army. They are versatile enough to change that weapon loadout and affect the game more. They're durable enough to last the majority of the game, unless of course they're heavily targeted. Now they aren't indestructible by any means, there's only a 3 plus save with no invan, so if your opponent did really want rid of them, then they'll be gone. But it'll mean the rest of your army should remain pretty solid. So for the rating, I think I'm going to give the Invade of ATV Squad a Planet 40k rating of 4 out of 5. Now this unit could easily push for a 4.5 if you apply it to certain chapters, but as the Space Marine Codex goes, I'll be going with a 4. Very solid unit, durable, versatile, can be buffed, and makes the absolute most out of some of the HQ abilities such as the Apothecary. Pretty good DECA, definitely above average. Not quite an auto include for me as that's where I'm sort of placing things out of 5 star now. I mean there's so much in this codex to select from so there's not much in there that's an auto include at the moment. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you agree with this rating? If not let me know what your rating score would be and what chapter tactics you want to put them in. Again remember to subscribe if you're new and leave a like on the way out. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.